In one small community near the Gaza border, Hamas militants went door to door, murdering more than 100 people. Nora O'Donnell spoke with one teenager about how she survived. Kafar Za is now known as one of the conflict's deadliest massacres, where Hamas militants used motorized paragliders like this one to invade. I remember the hour on the clock, it was 6.22 a.m. We started hearing the alarm. I just froze. I had a panic attack and I couldn't move. 13-year-old Renana Batzer Suissa was born and raised on the kibbutz, just miles from the border with Gaza. She says the fact that she's alive is a miracle. Take us inside the shelter. What were you thinking? I was thinking many moments. This is going to be my last moment. And I was so afraid if someone's coming because are they going to rape me? Are they going to take me? Are they going to shoot me? I didn't know what, what, could, what could happen to me. Hamas terrorists went door to door, slaughtering anyone they could find, including babies and children. Renana and her family spent 16 hours hiding. What did you see when you finally left the shelter? I tried not to walk around as much as possible. I don't know if many people can understand, but the smell, it smelled like war and bad news and tears. Tell me about your walk to freedom. We needed to go to a bus. It was so so scary. A friend of my family came to me and she told me, no, 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 you're not crying, not now, not now, you can't do it, you can't fall apart now. You need to focus, you need to survive, keep going, keep walking, walk fast, run. We first met Renana when she was 10 years old. Even then, she was worried about attacks. It's very scary. I need all the time to be prepared to run. This time, she escaped north with her grandma, father, and mother, Ilonit. How many of your friends and neighbors are gone? Too many. What will you do now? We need to build our life back from nothing. This is not mine. This is not mine. It's not yeah. mine. <laughs> nothing. But they do have each other. She told me if we're going to... Um, Never make it together. I will let you kiss me anytime you want. Since then, I'm kissing <laughs> her every minute. Renana told us her mother kept her calm. In those hard moments where we thought the Hamas is going to come in any second, she told me to think about the Taylor Swift performance we're going to in June and how I'm going to sing and how much she's going to fill me. It gave you hope. Yeah. That, that I'm going to make it to June. <laughs> They're going to make it out of there alive. Oh, there it is. Uh, Nora, what, what's become of the neighborhood where this attack occurred? Well, it's really interesting, Jeff, because this kibbutz, which is now known as one of the worst massacres uh, in southern Israel is now a staging ground for Israeli forces as they get ready for this ground invasion of Gaza. One soldier who is there is quoted as saying, we are looking for revenge. Um, and as many of the IDF soldiers, Israeli Defense uh, Forces, helped liberate uh, people at the kibbutz, um, they saw what had happened to many of the people there. They were deeply affected. We learned today that there are some 200 uh, Israeli soldiers who have been killed. So, um, you know, I feel like we're reaching um, a critical point in this conflict. As you know, Jeff, uh, Israeli warplanes pounded Gaza again today uh, in some of the fiercest airstrikes uh, to date. And so now that Israel has formed uh, this unity government, uh, we are waiting to see what happens next. Jeff. A critical point with a lot more to come. Thank you very much.